Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're talking about pushing a value from one form to another. I get this question in all kinds of varieties. How do I push a value? How do I pull a value? How do I populate a value? All kinds of people. In fact, I get it asked so much, we're just going to leave it generic. I get, how do I either push, pull, or populate? <laughs> Those are the three things people ask. A value from one form to another, right? Perfect examples right here on the title slide, right? You got the customer form, customer ID. I want to automatically push that to the order form. Now, people always say push, but in this particular case, this is a pull. I'm, let me explain the differences between these two. So pulling a value involves opening up a new form, and that new form will pull the value from an existing form. Okay, for example, my customers and orders. The customer form has a button on it to open up the order form, the order form can then get the customer ID from the open customer form, right? We'll use the default property, the default value property. This does not necessarily create a new record, but if you continue to add other things like a description or whatever, it will create a new record using that default value. This requires no programming. On the other hand, you can also push a value. That means that the old form, the form that's already open, pushes the value to another form. It can be a form that's already open, or you can open a form and then set the value in it. This does require some VBA or some other event programming. You could use a macro if you really want to. And this can either update an existing record on that form or even create a new one. So I'm going to show you both techniques. I'm going to show you the expert level one and the developer level one. I consider the pull method to be expert level. It's a little bit beyond the basics, right? It might be a little bit tough for beginners, but as long as you understand relationships and things between two tables and such, you should be able to get that no problem. In fact, I've already showed you how to do this in my invoicing video. I'll put a link to that down below. Then after that, I'll show you the developer method, how you can push that value, okay? And depending on what you wanna do, either method could work fine for you, all right? Pulling is definitely easier, but it's got some limitations too. So first let's talk about some prerequisites. You should definitely know what default values are and how to set them, both in tables and in forms. Watch this video on how to get a value from a form that's already open. If you want to continue to the push method, watch my intro to VBA video first. It'll teach you all you need to know to get started with VBA in about 20 minutes. And I do cover how to get values from one form to another in my invoicing video. These are all free. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch those, then come on back. All right, so first up, let's talk about the pull method. Now, this is what I use in my Tech Help Free template. If you watch that video on, on invoicing that I told you earlier, you got the customer form, right? When you open up the order form or the contact form, either one, the, the order form has the customer combo right here. Now, this customer combo is a customer ID. It's the same thing as right there. And if I go to create a new record, you can see it's already sitting there, right? Because I'm using the default value field in this combo box, default value property, excuse me, in this combo box to get that ID. And how do we do that? Well, we go into here, design view, go to the properties for that box, go to data, and right here is the default value property. Let me make that bigger. And there it is, I'll zoom in for you right? It's equals forms, bang, exclamation point is a bang, right? Forms, bang, customer F, bang, customer ID. So when you create a new record, the default value is automatically set in that field. In fact, not necessarily when you create a new record, when you open up the form and go to a blank new record, right? There actually is no record here yet. You see the new up here, right? It hasn't been assigned. And this value doesn't get assigned unless you put something else in one of these other fields first. Right, you gotta put something in here like hi or whatever. Now that record is created and then that value is now set. Okay, so that's how you pull a value. Same thing in the contacts field. Okay, in the contacts form, I get the customer ID for the record and I put it down here in a hidden field. See that, that's a hidden customer ID that also uses the default value, okay? That's pulling. Pulling is very easy to do, okay? Now, you can also push these values. In other words, you wanna open up the form and then set the values. The benefit is it actually creates the record for you. That I mean, that could be a benefit or a drawback because 
if the user clicks the button and pushes the value, it's going to create a record. If they then exit it, you now have a blank record and all it's got in it is the customer ID. Okay. But let's see how this works. Let's do this with the, with the order form. Okay. So I'm going to come in here. Actually, what we could do is we can leave this default value there because we can make a separate button here, right? This opens up this customer's orders, right? What if we want to make another button that just says add new order and it, and we'll have it open up the order form, set the combo box, and we'll also set today's date. You could do both of these with the pull method, but let's do it with the push method. In fact, yeah, let's, let's go in here and get rid of that default value. Let's come in here. We'll get rid of the default value so we know it's working. Delete. All right, remember the name of the field is customer combo, okay? So save it, close it, close it. Now if I open it up and go to a new record, there's nothing in there, okay? So we're gonna open it up now from a button. We're going to set the date and the customer combo box. And this is how we do it. We come in here, design view. I'm just gonna copy one of these buttons, copy, paste. We'll call this add new order. Okay. Whoops. Come here. All right. Let's give the button a good name. Add order button, BTN. All right. And then we can either right click on the button and go to build event, or we can go to events and go to on click. We'll use the build event. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to open the form in data entry mode, which means we're adding a new record. So do command dot open form. What order? What, what form is the order form, comma. Uh, view is fine, filter, da, da, da. Data mode is gonna be AC form add. We're adding a new record. Because if not, if you just open it, it's gonna go to the first record and you're gonna be changing that one. So you don't wanna do that, right? All right, so now the form is open and we're sitting on a blank new record. Now we can set the values. So we can say forms, order F, and then it's customer combo equals the customer ID on the current form. You can just say customer ID. By default, it'll grab whatever form you're on, which is the customer F, and put that in there. You don't have to put, I see all kinds of people putting me in there. You don't need a me or a me dot. All right, don't worry about me. That's for properties, not fields. I mean, it's, technically you can use it, but you don't need to. Okay, and we're gonna set the date too. I believe it's order date, right? So forms, order F, order date. Let me do this, order date equals, let's do today's date, the date function. And there, order date did capitalize, that's probably it, <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay, and then when you're done with that, we're gonna do a me, or not a me, we're gonna do forms order F dot refresh, that'll save that record, right? So we're gonna open up the form, set the customer ID, set the date, refresh the form, so those, those values are saved and the record's no longer dirty. This of course is optional, you don't have to do this. If you don't want that, then don't put it in there. The record will be sitting there dirty waiting for more input. Okay, and at that point you can still hit escape to cancel out of it. So that's up to you. All right, in fact, I'm gonna leave it remmed out. I'm gonna leave that remmed out. All right, so save it, debug compile once in a while. All right, let's come back over here. Let's close this guy down. Customer form, add new order, boom, there we go. We're on a blank new record. It put today's date in there. It filled in the customer combo. And now I'm ready. I can come down here and just put new items in, right? Uh, uh, toy phaser or whatever. Okay. And that's it. So, and there's benefits to doing it this way too, because like I said, without having to pull it as a default value, you get a record in the parent. I know one of the problems that people have all the time with the other one is they see that that's there and they just start entering information in without putting in the order date or the description and it gives them an error message because you got to put something in the parent record first. Okay? So that's how you open a form and send the values into it. And there's lots of other stuff you could do here too. You can, you know, open up an existing record with a where condition, uh, you name it. There's, I, I cover lots and lots and lots of stuff like this in my Access Developer course. All right, I'm up to developer 46 I just started. So we got lots and lots of developer lessons to teach you VBA, to teach you how to do this kind of stuff, to build awesome databases. And it's fun because it's, it's with me. and I, I like to make it fun, right? All right, so now you know the difference between pushing a value to a form or pulling a value. So when you say to me, when you post in the forums, hey, I'm trying to 
push the customer ID to this, da, 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 da. Okay, that's how you do it. If you want to pull a value, you know, you open up a new form and just get a default value from somewhere else, that's pulling the value. Push and pull, either one, whichever one you want. Populate, what do you mean by populate? Which, how do you want to do it? Which way do you want to handle it, right? So that's it. And a lot of times if you're asking for help, like in the forums, it, be as specific as you can. What exactly are you trying to do? And that will help us help you. But there you go. That's going to do it. That's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsors. First, we have Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. You can check them out at accessexperts.com. Another shout out to Sammy Shama from Shama Consultancy. Sammy is a certified Microsoft Office specialist, and he not only offers Access application development, but he also provides one-on-one -on -one tutoring services. So if you need someone to hold your hand and help you with your Access project, Sammy is your guy. Check him out at shamaconsultancy.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming as long as you keep watching them I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing free four hours go watch it and okay okay a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course so I do now have a quicker Microsoft access for beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes and no I didn't just put the video on fast forward <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well now if you like level one level two is just a dollar that's it one dollar and that's another whole like 90 minute course Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay. Want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my access forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, 
John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.